Hello, everyone. Welcome to 52 Weeks of Leadership. My name is Molly Anderson, Director of our Center for Leadership and Organizational Effectiveness. We're thrilled to have you here with us today uh, for our episode on um, leaders, developing leaders through reflection with Jamie Falzerano. Um, before we begin, I just want to recognize Geico Careers for being our sponsor and making this available to all. A little bit about Jamie Falzerano. Jamie is the managing director of our award-winning Leader Corps program. She's also an executive coach and facilitator. She's had 20 years of experience working here at the University of Buffalo and has also worked with big companies like Walt Disney World, Orlando Magic, and the University of Central Florida. She has a master's degree in organizational development and we can't wait for her to get started. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Jamie Falzerano. Great, thank you so much, Molly. And I just wanna thank Chloe for asking me to be a part of 52 Weeks. Um, we were discussing earlier, it's such an honor to be included with the company that is part of this program. So, and I also wanna thank everybody who's joining today. Uh, it's really great to be with you. It's interesting as I was finalizing my slides for today, I thought, wow. So I'm following the Chloe Conference and Daniel Pink and all those wonderful presenters last week as well as President Tripathi. So what a tough act to follow. Um, luckily, I did think that what went on last week is providing great content for us to reflect on together today if you were able to attend either of those sessions. I really appreciated how President Tripathi reflected back on his education and his family. And he mentioned that um, given his family background, that it was, um, very obvious that or he, he felt the connection to education, but that he didn't see himself in the role he is in today. Um, he also noted that his experiences shaped his leadership style. And through, I'm sure that that was through reflection that he can um, acknowledge that and see that. So it was great, again, kind of teed up for what we were going to do this week. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is to spend the next 15, 20 minutes thinking about how you reflect, and what that can mean for you as you develop yourself and others. So as mentioned, I'm the managing director of Leader Corps. Leader Corps is a personal and professional development journey that our graduate students can opt into during their time in, at UB. And Leader Corps is really meant to help develop the leaders of tomorrow, and it takes a village. So Leader Corps has supporters from alumni to coaches to staff and faculty, and really to all of you, our current and future leaders. Our students also utilize themselves, and one way they do that is through reflection. So what I want to do is, like I said, talk to you a bit about reflection, and I'm really hoping that you walk away with confirmation maybe of how you already reflect, potentially a new method or perspective, as well as how you can help maybe even inspire or develop a culture of reflection for our future leaders. There are many definitions of reflection, and John Dewey has been called the father of reflection. Another um, person in this area who's written on it is uh, Mr. Warren Bennis, Dr. Warren Bennis. On becoming a leader, he writes, there are lessons in everything, and if you are fully deployed, you will learn most of them. Experiences aren't truly yours until you think about them, analyze them, examine them, question them, reflect on them, and finally understand them. The point, he says, is to use your experiences rather than being used by them, to be the designer, not the design, so that experiences empower rather than imprison. During their two years in the MBA program, in the Leader Corps program, our students are write or video between 40 and 50 reflection logs, and it is not easy. But the hardest part really is finding the rhythm and what works for you as an individual. So I first want to share a few methods and ideas on setting yourself up for success in reflecting. And if you are somebody who has found your flow in reflection, it would be great. I'd really love it if you could share in the chat what those best practices are for you. And then we can come up with those um, and come back to those in a little bit. So again, go ahead and share in the chat and Molly later on, I'll have you share those with us. So let's start by first, you know, kind of figuring out the why. What are the benefits of reflection? 
So there was a Washington Post article written by Colonel Eric Hill on the role of reflection. And he writes, it's an effort to understand how the events of our life shape the way in which we see the world, ourselves and others. And it is essential for any leader. Reflection is what links our performance to our potential. It's the process of properly unpacking ourselves as leaders for the good of others. So through reflection, you can see just a couple of items here, but we're able to learn faster, both what's effective and what's ineffective. It can help us prevent future mistakes. It helps us prepare for future experiences. It allows us a safe space to question our assumptions. It also increases our self-awareness and our emotional intelligence that I know a coach, executive coach Maureen Mullane spoke to us about during the 52 weeks of leadership. And finally, it helps individuals build confidence in their abilities. So the feedback that I receive from individuals who reflect, they really appreciate the power of reviewing what they're doing well, and then being able to clearly share that, those abilities to share those experiences and those stories with team members, with their leaders, when they're advocating for themselves, and also um, with future employers. So again, I, I work with a lot of students and my students repeatedly say, when I go in for a job interview, I don't have to think about tell me a time when. They do because they're prepared students, but they have all these stories through their reflections that they can dip into and utilize for their, uh, for their interviews and for the stories that they're sharing. So I'm really hoping that um, some of you shared your best practices. I see four, four, I see the number four in the chat. So maybe Molly, is there, um, is, would it be possible for you to share some of those with me now? Did anybody share what their best practices are? Well, certainly Anthony Bellani shared that he built up morning pages for free form reflection. He uses a daily gratitude list. And also Jean said the same, she reads The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and introduced it into her morning routine. Isn't that great? So the so morning people, right? Jean and Anthony are morning people, and that's great to find your time, um, find when it works for you. That's definitely one of the things that you want to figure out. So they sound so simple, right? Some of these things that you see on the list, they sound so simple, yet they are hard because the first thing is to be really intentional in how you do this. So set down some time and figure out, you know, do I like to reflect in the morning? Do I like to reflect in the afternoon? Am I a mor Monday morning? Am I every day at 4.30? Am I Friday afternoon before I leave the office? What works for you um, so you can be intentional? And I remember Paul Teslick spoke um, during, again, during 52 weeks and during some of his sessions at Chloe, at the Chloe conference last week, uh, he spoke about Carol Dweck and a growth mindset. And um, really being able to have a growth mindset and learn, know that everything you do, you have a learning opportunity, is gonna make it um, a better opportunity for you. It's gonna make a better experience for you when you reflect. So it's a great way to build that growth mindset muscle. Um, and remember, before you sit down to start reflecting, the intention is to help you learn and grow. If you made a mistake, that's okay if you're learning from it. And so Paul's session was called Learning from Set Setbacks. And as you probably all know, most of these sessions are recorded and are still available on the website. So if you're like, oh, I wanna revisit that one, it's, they're all there and they're all wonderful to, to check out again. So investing in yourself, you know, when you find that time that works for you, commit to it and commit to yourself. Make it part of your routine, your daily, your weekly routine, and do not compromise. Right? You've got to set yourself up for success. Um, if you had a meeting with somebody who is really important, you would do everything you can to make that meeting. Well, you are really important. So make that time, set it aside, and be purposeful. Um, all right. So the next step and some things that people struggle with are, how, where do I start? Right? I'm not quite sure what it looks like. What, do, what is a reflection? So as I was making this slide, I thought, ooh, there's some PowerPoint police on, I might get in trouble. But what I really wanted to showcase here is there is no one right way to, to process your thoughts and to reflect, but there are a few models here that you might start with to see what works and what doesn't. In the Leader Core program, we work a great deal with the STAR format. It's um, relatively simple and it helps um, our students as beginner reflectors kind of work through a process. So, 
they look at the situation. What happened? Um, um, what tasks, what actions did I make? And it's really actually hard. We're, we live in a world where we talk about the team and we talk about we, but in, the, in reflection, you really wanna focus on the I. What did I do here? What actions did I take? And then what were the results of those actions or tasks that I took? So that you can see what works, what didn't. Um, and just because something doesn't work in one situation doesn't mean it won't in, in another. It just gives you um, a framework to work through when you're reflecting. So again, there's a few different models here that I wanted to share with you only as a purpose to say, you could probably search up and find hundreds of different ways to work through reflections. And again, you have to find what works for you. So in LeaderCore, we frame our reflections with this. Oh, got to click one more time. There we go. In LeaderCore, we frame our reflections with our competency model. This model was created by employers and individuals in the School of Management, many of you who might be on the call today. Uh, we ask for feedback every other year, every two or three years, to make sure we're keeping it up to date. And this model is really meant to prepare, to help better prepare our students for the world of work. Uh, you can see the 10 competencies here. The next layer is over 150 behaviors that the students can use as a reference to see how those competencies actually show up. So at UB and at the School of Management, we provide so many opportunities for our students to develop in these competencies. And in addition to that, our students see many ways that they can do this in their personal life, um, in their, in their um, part-time jobs outside. So they see it every day, definitely by the end of the program, probably about halfway through, um, where they can't stop looking through what we call the leader core lens. And, and I happen, we talk about it a lot in class too. We try to, um, every time we get together, we try to say like, hey, what would you reflect on this week? And share what everybody else is reflecting on, because if somebody is stumped, then they can learn from their classmates as well. Um, I actually talk about it so much that a student a couple of years ago got me a shirt and I almost wore it today. It said, did you write a log about it? So I didn't have to say it as much. I just wore my shirt and everybody could read my shirt. Um, and then I also just last week got a bag that says log about it on it from another student. So clearly it's a common theme in the program. <coughs> so I bring this up because in your organization, you may very well have competencies, key competencies that you emphasize or use to create culture within your organization. So my question to you is, are you reflecting back on how these show up um, for you and for your team members? Is there a way to engage yourself and others to encourage individuals to continue reflecting, reducing mistakes, building confidence within the organization and within their roles? So what I want to do next is kind of talk to you. Some of you have been on for many of the sessions on the 52 weeks of leadership, and I'd be curious. You went through all these um, learning opportunities and what action have you taken and have you reflected on? So I don't know if I got them all, but I got a whole bunch of the topics that, that Molly and the Chloe team have put together and Rick um, to get in front of you guys and, and expose you guys to over these last 22 weeks. And so what I'd love to know from you and what I'd love to take you through right now is a reflection. Right, so take out a piece of paper, think about one, one time you listened to something and you went and took action afterwards. And I, on that piece of paper, go ahead and pick whatever it is. And I'm gonna give you, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds to write down a couple key points. So if you're a bullet person, you can write the bullets. If you're a narrative, you can write a couple sentences. What was the situation? What were the tasks that you took? And what actions did you take? Some other good questions might be, you know, how did it feel, right? What went well? What worked? So as you're writing these down, think about this. What actions did you take? How did it feel? What went well? What worked? What could have gone better? If you were in a situation like this, or one that might use these skills in the future, what might you do the same or what might you do differently? Some of you might not be writing it down, but maybe you're thinking in your head, you know, after, um, after Paul talked about learning from setbacks, I really, for the next week, I was really purposeful that when I heard myself maybe having more of a fixed mindset, 
I, I said yet, right? So sometimes at the end of the sentence, it's say, I, I can't do that, comma, yet. That's how we start to incorporate a growth mindset. You know, I did that for a week and I noticed I did a few more things than I would normally do, or I was open to more ideas. Um, so again, I just wanted to give you a chance to kind of really reflect right here and now while we're together on the last 22 weeks. If you weren't with us for the last 22 weeks, that's fine. I'm sure you did something in the last three hours that you could spend reflecting on and asking those same questions. What actions did you take? How did it feel? What went well? What might you have done differently? And how might you use what you learned going forward? By just going through this in your brain or on a piece of paper, you actually might be able to identify what works for you a little bit better. Um, do you like to write a whole narrative down? You're like, we don't have enough time, Jamie. I can't do this right now. I wanna write the whole story. Or you're like, this is great. Boom, 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 got it done. And then again, thinking about, am I a Monday morning reflector? Am I every day at 4.30, that's my time? What is your own personal practice of reflection? So once you know how to reflect and how it impacts you in your development, then you can really help others as well. So the simple act of doing provides a great example for those who see you. And you may also consider asking reflective questions to your superior or colleagues or subordinates through experiences. So you get to the end of a project, maybe you ask a series of questions. I have a, a model on the next slide I'll show you um, that you might wanna work through. Is it the end of a team meeting? Is it the end of a big project? Is it the end of a quarter? Um, there might be some questions you can ask together as a team to help encourage and um, show others what the power of reflection can do for them. And finally, the other thing I would say is be open. Some people are verbal reflectors. I tend to be sometimes. I like to have a conversation. I like to share with somebody, hey, this really worked well. I thought it went well. What did you think? I, I like to do a, a team reflection sometimes. So being able to have a conversation and being available for others to have a conversation with is a great way to help others and encourage a culture of reflection within your organization. So as mentioned, um, one model that you might use is the Gibbs Reflective Cycle. Um, you might have heard the famous quote before, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Um, famous quote by Georgie P. Box. And, um, Somebody, if anybody knows Nick Everest, he always would say this and I never quite understood it, but then I do, right? Here's a reference, here's something you could use. It is not the be all end all or the only one out there, but it's a great place to start. So after a project, you walk through these questions. You sit down with your team and you walk through them and maybe you already do that and that's great. Um, and because what are you learning from that? I mean, again, for anybody who is learning, maybe you could share in the, in the chat with others because I'm only sharing this with you, but you guys have some great experiences and some great ways you've utilized the tool of reflection. So I would love you to share with others within the group to say, hey, reflection has helped my team do this, or it's helped me do this, or here's how I reflect, here's a model I use. Please continue to share that um, in, the, in the field, in the chat box, sorry. So ideally, you know, when you invest in yourself and others with a growth mindset, you and your organization are gonna see an impact. Um, it can make on their engagement and their success. And that obviously all leads to stronger business. Gallup reported that only 38% of managers and executives are engaged at work. The number was 29% for middle level managers. Could something as simple as asking good questions and encouraging reflection and a growth mindset increase that number? Could helping yourself and others through reflection provide a work environment where people have a stronger commitment and a stronger sense of belonging? To where they are. So I don't have statistics report back to you on that, but I, I feel confident in many things that I've read that this simple yet hard action can make an impact on your organization. Um, Paul Zak wrote an article that was in Harvard Business Review in 2017, and in it he shared that in 2016, the global C, in the global CEO survey, PwC reported that 55% of CEOs think that the lack of trust is a threat to their organization's growth. But most have done little to increase trust, mainly because there aren't, they aren't sure where to start. He shared the number of, a number of different ways, actually, in the article. Two that are especially relevant here, intentionally building relationships and facilitating whole personal growth. 
So both of these can be done through reflection, through asking good questions, through creating an environment where a growth mindset is key and where you're building off each other and from each other. So making a reflection, making reflection part of your routine and helping those around you do the same can impact success, um, their success, and in turn, obviously, your organization success. So I'm kind of coming to a close here. And part of the reason that I kept it brief is to also showcase that it doesn't take long for such an important and impactful practice. Um, the hardest part is really finding out what works for you and continuing it until it becomes a habit. So just to really quickly recap, we briefly touched on kind of what reflection was or a few different definitions and backgrounds, what it might look like to you and to those that shared, thank you, because others will benefit from what you shared today and how to begin or enhance your reflections. And then we went through a reflection, kind of real brief. I know not an ideal circumstance, but just to get a, a feel for what it, what it feels like. Um, and another key thing is to remember that for this, for reflection, good enough is a great place to start. Don't, don't think I have to have the perfect reflection or that reflection has to be perfect, right? Do something that's good enough. Just get started because getting started is sometimes the hardest thing. So figure out what works for you, then ask good questions at the right times and do that for your teammates as well so that you can, your department and your organization can benefit from the power of reflection. I just want to thank Molly and Rick again for inviting me to be a part of 52 Weeks of Leadership. And thank you all for allowing me to join you today and learn with you. Thank you, Jamie. We have a few questions and comments in the chat. But one question I had for you is, would you consider prayer a tool for reflection? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if faith is something that individuals um, you know, feel strongly with, absolutely. Prayer can be a, a powerful reflection. Thank you. We have a question from Rick Steinberg asking, besides the value of reflection for an individual leader, is there value in team reflection? If yes, how might the process work? Yeah, so um, I tried to mention that a little bit earlier, but again, one, one tool you might wanna use is that Gibbs reflective cycle. So absolutely, at, you know, you think about a big project that you go, go through or even a tough meeting, right? And you wanna learn from that meeting, the whole idea of reflection is to learn. And when you learn, you do better the next time or you, or you do the good things you did the first time again. So it really, um, it really helps people um, experience, go through the experience and have um, some key learnings and key takeaways from it. And I did just see somebody in the chat said, absolutely right, there's, there's a concrete learning or concrete memory that you can get from that as well. So thanks for sharing reflection, helps to make things concrete. So that's great. And, and that's, you know, I see this too. As, as leaders, we often have to, a bias for action, right? And that's absolutely right, Ron. Thank you so much that pausing, sometimes the big things especially, they need time to simmer, right? So pausing and letting them simmer and letting, you know, seeing what comes out, that's a good thing, right? To sit and pause on something. So thanks, yes, reflecting is action. That's true, thanks, Anthony. What other, I'm sorry, I didn't read ahead. I just saw that coming and I wanted to include it. Just a lot of supportive comments from our uh, attendees today. I know when you thought about the topic for today's session, you considered not just all of the themes of the presenters, but all of the goals our leaders had for 2021. As you all know, you know we were facing you know, some unprecedented times. And so we asked you, what are your goals for 2021 as a leader? And it'd be interesting or you know, good challenge for all of us to reflect on how we're doing with that and, you know, how we might be able to help you in those goals in the next half of the year. Absolutely. You know, I think from day to day, we go through our checklists, right? Like, what do I have to get done today? What are my tasks? And even if we set enough side to set enough time aside to do like a development plan or set some goals, how often do we look back and see our progress? How often do we look back and and really um, afford ourselves the opportunity to say like, hey, I, I did a good job there. And I'm really proud of that. Uh, I think we're so busy to moving to get things done that we forget, as Anthony said, reflecting is important. It is action and it is powerful. It does help, um, help 
everything we do, right? Um, we can make better decisions sometimes if we've stepped back, if we've paused for a minute, um, a lot of times actually, <laughs> especially if we are a little bit more hot-headed to, to move into action. Sometimes we have to tell ourselves like, take a deep breath, step back. Okay, maybe I need to take a half an hour. Maybe now is a good time for reflection, so. Well, thank you, Jamie. And thanks everyone who's uh, joining us today from Buffalo and beyond. Uh, next week, we have Larry Zielinski, who is an executive in residence in healthcare in the School of Management. He's gonna be talking about leading us out of the healthcare wilderness. There's not one person on the planet who hasn't been impacted by healthcare in the last year. So I know that this is a session that would be of interest to everyone. So we look forward to seeing you next week. And also, as Jamie mentioned, all of our past recording recordings can be found on the Chloe website. So if you missed one or you forgot what you were going to reflect on in one, uh, feel free to go back. Uh, and as always, we love to hear from you. Please reach out if there's anything we can help you with. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you, everybody.